seems to me very, very um, buckly. <laughs> anyway, smart charging. <laughs> said five minutes. <laughs> 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 I will, I will. Yeah. I know you're sick and tired of listening again and again, same you know, phrase or whatever. Okay, smart tourism. What is smart tourism? I will make it short. It's a, you've got your smartphone in your pocket, okay? And on the table. So the smartphone work for the uh, travel, well, for you when you're traveling. There is a smart tourism, isn't it? Yeah. Artificial intelligence, you know. Non-human intelligence. There is artificial intelligence. <coughs> so I think um, uh, the the artificial intelligence constantly and exponentially smarter, smarter than humans. Um, this is who I am. Actually, I'm very smart <laughs> enough <laughs> to realize I'm not such a smart guy. <laughs> I need a machine. Uh, which smarter than myself, actually. Okay. Um, today I'm going to present the three parts: uh, principle of AI application to tourism and future of uh, tourism with AI. Look, um, let's talk about the perception. The perception is a shared value, shared examples. However, paradigm shift. Uh, proposed by Thomas Kuhn in 1962, he said uh, paradigm shift is, uh, is the same things but entirely different way we understand it. Okay? So, human perception is uh, what do you see? You can see um, rabbit or duck. Some people say rabbit, some other people say duck, or well, some other people see both together. That's how our human brain works. Okay, changing every time. Single situation, another situation. But however, computer, perception, this guy, Frank Rosenberg, he in the early age of AI field, he introduced machine. The machine can make a differentiate among the circle, triangle, and square. That is name is perception. Okay? That's the starting point of Human perception and AI perception. You guys know this Alan Turing, English scientist, 1950, he gave a question and raised a question, really, machine think? This is a very important question. And the Turing test suggests human-like response. Look, let's go into the principle of AI. You know, your brain. You got your neuron, okay? So neuron is known as a nerve cell, nerve cell, which is a receive, process, transmit a signal or information through the electric pulse or chemical pulse. And these neurons get together, connect each other through the synapses, okay? The more connection is more powerful, you know, uh, intelligence. But uh, however, th this guy, the godfather of deep learning technology, he introduced a big theory uh, as a prop uh, back propagation algorithm. Uh, I learned this back propagation algorithm in 1972, about 20 years ago. The theory is exactly the same. The difference is Google and Apple. Hmm. They made it. So, these guys introduced the back propagation theory like this. Input, hidden, output. Exactly the same pattern of human brain. Okay? <coughs> so, this circle node is, is, a, is a represent of artificial you know, uh, uh, neuron. The artificial neuron and then arrow represent of connection to the output of previous in a circle and then another you know input. This as uh, uh, the artificial intelligence works. Look, the artificial neural network is it takes input from many other neurons and collects data, they combine in and out downstream to other neurons. So 
here's a picture, you know. And the picture is, is goes into the neuron and connecting to the another input and connecting to the another input, like what uh, human brain works. And finally, we got the output. The accuracy and productivity and efficiency is uh, quite improved because of Google, because of uh, Apple, because of uh, Amazon. Look, we already, you know, widespreadly use Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, and Siri. Okay, this is a uh, very works well for your life. Okay, so first of all, application to tourism. I'm going to present a three part. First of all, as a voice recognition, you know, we are already uh, 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 using the voice recognition, and voice recognition actually, you know capture your voice and uh, articulate your voice or not, or articulate the actual you know, data. So we have two different types of uh, uh, voice recognition. One is text dependent, another is text independent. So if you put into the pen number, there is text dependent. But if you don't need uh, uh, the text, it just uh, the machine recognizes you Will you? That is text independent. Okay. And another uh, application, application to tourism is uh, image mining. Image mining. This is cl cloud vision proposed uh, provided by uh, you know Google. They suggest powerful image analysis, which is deep learning technology. Look here. The large scale of data pictorial data, text data, whatever, facial data. And then this data collected automatically and then put into the you know, female, youth, Asian, family, like a tourism context, and then group of tourism, and then we suggest the preference, taste, who they are. They start detecting the, the traveler attribute such as Asian, such as a white, such as a female, such as a family, whatever. And then we can make a travel pattern mining. Finally, our device, uh, you know, recommend uh, personalized, you know, information, meaningful information to yourself. That is a smartphone and smart tools. So look, the Google uh, Cloud Imaging, the articulate this picture and catch what there is. There is Eiffel Tower, okay? There is a scar, there is a landmark. Another one is a restaurant picture. This is Dinsum, okay? And name is uh, Dumpong, and Korean name is Mandu. And it's, you know, technology, uh, Google image mining, analyze face and analyze the, the, the food and then design tourism product and destination based on the analysis. That's the image mining. Third, as you well known, face recognition. Look, these guys are so happy, very likely. This is important, you know? We measure everything, every you know, travelers who have experience from their destination, is it happy, satisfied, or not? By question, but no longer question. We just catch the emotion from the face. That's it. So look, another label detection is, is a landmark or, or, or you know, uh, uh, what? Tourism product and experience. This is also touched by, you know, uh, Google image mining. So data detection and data collection from the, uh, the all of the where some data is semi-structured, some data are unstructured, some, some data is very structured way. But the, we, and then we, natural language text contains lexical syntax, semantic, and parametric, any all different kinds of uh, language style, we can divide and assemble again. There is a classification and categorization analysis. So let's talk about the future of uh, tourism with AI. There are five different style of jobs, from repetitive to the creative. Okay, so repetitive is uh, like a 
maybe AI will occupy. So AI, within five years, occupy that job. I don't know really five years or not, but routine job will be replaced by AI within 10 years. Optimizing job, probably 15 years more. Look, complex and creative would be safe because we think. Look, but we have another axis from optimization to the creativity, but we have another axis is emotion. Like we are already talking about the emotion, sympathy, compassion, sort of things. So if emotion high and there's creativity, that is its area, designing, idea, direction, strategy. Okay? That is its creative complex job for us. Okay? The AI fully, fully replaced this part. But however, that part of the AI is work for us. Human is just a got involved. In. And AI equal to the human. They collaborate each other. And finally, this is a human part for you, for me. Okay, look. 2004, Phil Nicholson, he got the finally major US Open championship in golf. And so happy. This is who I am. Look, the Arthur Gold defeated, you know, uh, this guy is, is a champion of gold. He losing game and does crime. But however, Arthur Gold felt no happiness from win. This is big, huge gaps and difference between AI and human. So I think we must protect ourselves from AI attraction. Okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep trying to save because we are going to soon or later, you know, the AI will come to us. Thank you very much. What about your job? <laughs> I'm afraid, actually. You know what? Um, the other days, I, I, I'm writing a paper in English for promotion. But the, these days, I, I put my Korean you know, uh, sentence into Google, and Google tells us the perfect English. And I try to replace a little other you know, keywords onto that sentence. It seems to work for me. But however, Somebody like undergraduate students will, will do that kind of stuff, like myself. And the undergraduate students will not hear my lecture anymore. He will go to the YouTube. My son go to the YouTube and he's smarter than me, actually. It is true. I'm so afraid. <laughs> it's very interesting, especially when you do, when you do the basic things, the 101. You don't need to go. You don't need to go to university to do the 101, and that's why we need research to be at the cutting edge of what we do. So we we create the things that technology cannot create for us. Um, I think this <coughs> uh, reference to Tegmark earlier on in, the, in the, his book, he was talking about singularity, and you were saying that you thought that the complex jobs and the creative jobs are unlikely. So do you think that therefore the singular, well, the kind of you know, proper artificial intelligence, which is able to to generate proper creativity and generate proper complexity. Is that never going to happen? That's the point we have to find out the proper, accurate, and efficient. You know, actually, like we are already talking about the, the, the uh, spot, spotty, the, the music, spotty. Uh, Spotify. It, my son is so crazy about it. He said, Apple is nothing. Spot is, is very good. So AI is a, is, 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 a, is, a, is a matter of accuracy, finding the exact one for, for the man, for the woman, for the you know, users. So probably if the, the AI cannot predict it accurately, that AI is a, is a garbage. That's it. There is a garbage or real <laughs> smart. We choose. But sooner or later, the accuracy is going, going up to the 100%. That's the frightening point. 
You know, it's a crazy thing. Is actually 20 years ago, 1997, and when I got the master degree, I learned this program. Actually, it's exactly the same with the deep learning technology uh, developed by Google with the Jeffrey Hinton. The algorithm is same. The program is the same. Different thing is is a is a power uh, and the capacity, and that's it. So I think Google and Apple and Facebook and Amazon. They will provide everything for us. So what should we do? But at least we have to know the principle of uh, the AI works, and then we can well, manipulate it for our purpose. So I want you to learn the basic skill of AI program technology software. And then you will clearly understand the AI, how it works. And, and I think the human brain works. And then you can find the, the gaps between those things. Can I, can I ask? Oh, yes, yeah, <laughs> yes, please. please. Um, yeah, uh, so I think interestingly, because in the in the UK, one of the uh, the the challenges, what are industrial challenge um, strategy, um, they talk about next generation services, and I think the three areas that uh, the the government are interested at the moment is uh, are accounting. Uh, insurance and legal services. And so that, I think because of the investment in these areas, I think a lot of people actually in the business school also thinking about, oh, you know, we realize that lots of the tasks in these industries, in service industries, um, can be replaced by AI uh, now, already, not in five years, not in 10 years, in these three areas. And so they're, they're thinking of, so what can we, actually teach what kind of skills that we need to teach our students um, to be better than AI. So, so I think you, going back to what, which disciplines that it's probably going to be kind of like anxious <coughs> now uh, of being replaced, I think these three are probably, yeah. The, Once again, I want to say this. If you don't touch really software of AI, you don't understand. So touch it. By yourself and uh, coding. Yeah. I just I just like that that slide too much. Um, uh, you know I I'm prepared for one hour, but he's giving me the five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, AI I, I, I like these slides too much because it's it's kind of it shows the continuum from the creative to not <coughs> the repetitive. And back to your question, if anybody is going to invest to become a receptionist, exactly if anybody is going to university or anybody is preparing to be a waiter bringing plates, you know, a waiter can be a very complex and cre creative kind of thing. Hello, sir, would you like my spare ribs? <laughs> <laughs> and can be the person who is actually bringing the plates. So that bit, it's kind of, um, it's probably going to be taken because it's not creative. It's not, it's not bringing you any value. So where is the value that you are? Um, Eva, would you like to say who you are? Sorry. Yeah, yes. sorry, I'm Eva, and I'm doing master's in um, career marketing. Um, so um, you say the interaction between machines and humans are, are already um, in use, but um, what about um, something that AI cannot understand, robotics can understand, for example, um, metaphor, um, they can understand irony, they can understand some patterns that uh, humans use. So um, they need to understand those things first and then, and then start to... Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I'm a Korean, Korean Even from in Korea. translation, if you write something, if you are, they don't understand. They don't understand, like, Similarities, they don't, they don't understand anything. So whenever I need to park in England, I try to use bingo, a lingo, the app. The machine is asking me who you are and pin number. And they don't understand my their, their pronunciation. And keep, you know, asking in my plate number. But keep, you know, are wrong. So there is a big huge gap between AI and me. This is a current situation. But however, I'm, I'm going to uh, say separately, totally separate two parts. One is, you know, 
It's a performance. Another is brand. Like him. This is got brand. He invites all of you in you know, one such a place, certain place, a certain you know, time. So human being is, is a mental activity guy. Mental processing <coughs> activity is, is a totally emotional and totally cognitive together. So I think one is goes to the brand part, another is goes to the actually performance part. So someone who controls the people, things like him, is, is, is going to be controlled the AI as well. But the AI will provide every single task and processing and small stuff will figure out for you. This is my uh, judgment so far. And the, well, this is very, very interesting because it's a meta-ontological thing. So the, the first ontology is what are we trying to do? And the, me the meta-ontological thing is what we mean that we're trying to do. What we say and what we mean that to say. The way that people say good morning, just one simple word, good morning, means a whole range of things. And the brain understands that because it understands the meaning behind the word from the, the way they say. You can say good morning, how are you? Or you say good morning and go. That simple, single difference gives you a whole range of different signals. When you go into different cultures, and when you go into different analogs, and when you go into the different irony, irony is the most difficult one. Especially, and there, there's some very interesting kind of Google translation and things where, uh, especially British irony is fantastic, because you can say something meaning exactly the opposite, and go on like that. And there's, a, there's something in Greek that says, which means let's let's meet at no day to drink no coffee. <laughs> which means exactly the opposite. The brain understands how to do it, but the computer does not. Um, so that's a, that's a very interesting thing. And people like you have a, a role in that because Eva is a German um, linguist um, by background, German philology or whatever. So it's the structure. So I'm I'm looking. I'm bringing some linguists in to look into the structure of the language. Because the structure of the language and then the culture, they bring layers of information that you need to unpack in order to understand what, what's happening. I, I want to say this. You know, in, usually, innovator is a 2.5% among the groups. But all the majority is usually 16%. So you can be a 16% only majority. That means that the left of the other people, 75%, still average in their life. So you will get a job using um, the knowledge and technology skills, AI. Yeah. First go, and then take a job. And then utilize your you know, network. And the other thing is, how much, how much are you prepared for a person who is doing that job? The minimum weight. So what's the minimum weight? Six, seven hundred pounds? How much are you prepared to pay for people who are doing that job? Just one other thing, just to do with, just, you've got those obviously gen generalized years to when those things could be taken over by AI. Limit, li limit, li obviously there are just estimates, but limitations on that are to do, like for instance, that could be possible in somewhere like London where the infrastructure is much more advanced than say, down here. I mean, I, I have experience of that in terms of the, the potential of the achievement of what we can gain on social media with people, with, with large scale amounts of people in one area. The infrastructure cannot handle that. Like, you can't do it, just from a social media side of things, you can't do a Facebook Live when you've got 300,000 people down at Bournemouth Beach because the local, in, the local well, communication and infrastructure isn't there. So, how does that help? How can that be? A, how can that happen across a you know, larger? Actually, the yeah, prediction is not accurate. It's just assumed. Uh, yeah, so but I think yeah. the AI or technology from now on is a winner takes all markets. So those five global companies will dominate all, all of the world market, and then we just catch up there what they do. Yeah. But, but, but the other thing is going back to the analog versus versus re-engineering and re-engineering. I was about to say that 13 people are watching live 
and I'm looking at the list and the first person is Korean, mm -hmm. the second person is in, in Denmark, the, thir the third person is Stanislav in Bulgaria, Giselle, I have no idea where she's from, and Katerina is watching from Hong Kong. And just as I was about to say that, uh, there is a message here that says, beautiful wireless connection, uh, the, the live stream is right to reconnect. Uh, having said that, the global element of this, and the fact that the location becomes much less relevant, is, is so prevalent, because these 13 people are actually mm -hmm. engaging with us here. We are in this room, in this geolocation, but they, they don't need to be here. So a lot of the functions and a lot of the things that will be emerging will be totally irrelevant to the location of the people who are doing it. So the person who stole 100 pounds from my colleague yesterday, we have no idea where they are. So we reported to the police, to FBI, and all the rest of it, but we have absolutely no idea where they're based. They're based on Gmail, and they're using my, mail, my, my, they're using my name, not even my email. So there's, there's a bit of locations becoming irrelevant. There's one quick question. Um, I know I like, cannot claim creativity. My like patents can only be created by a human. And if you had a patent material which created by an AI, that would undermine it as a patent. So a company can't even use an AI to create uh, it. So I'm not even sure that an AI or an AI process can claim copyright. Chris is on the Chris is so if it's about the a month ago. Yeah, but well, I'm talking about intellectual property. Like like mm -hmm. legal definition of I can I apply for a patent. Yeah. Human yeah. hand, but on the other hand you prove that if it was AI based <coughs> information, you've got to go over and bring like we discover it. Like you would have to go yes, and find out what happened. That's a good point. Actually it's a game of the between human and the AI and yeah. patent. Look, Napster is is illegal in our software of music. And Steve Jobs, he, he got an idea and he, he made the, the iTunes for legal you know, processing. Right. So patent would be protect from AI copy. But how? Probably law made by human yes. and government. So it's, it's a human being will try to uh, protect the AI copy by legal processing. Uh, I'm sure. OK. May I, may I? <laughs> I was about to be human and say, guys, some of you need biological brains and coffee and, and stuff like that, but this is pushing No, but very, very quickly, I think there is a movement uh, from, from uh, you know, people at law, uh, in law, um, law school, um, to actually look into this legal aspect of AI, including actually that AI should be given rights to um, the creations that they have, and also, on the other hand, also, they have to be taxed. If they are taking jobs from us, we pay, we pay taxes. And they, AI will vote one day. Exactly. <laughs> and and um, <laughs> Okay, guys, uh, okay. we're going to go to a break. Okay. We're going to go to a break. Uh, our guests from outside are invited to coffees and drinks and stuff like that. Our students are invited to see Laura at the back. Now she's going to do something with you uh, for a few minutes. So those of you who are visiting us from outside, please join us for a coffee outside.